Hi, I'm David Ivory, Director of the Sound Recording and Music Technology Program at Montgomery County Community College. Recently, several students have been asking me the differences between analog consoles. And today, in this segment, we are going to explore the two basic designs of analog consoles. One is a split console design, meaning the inputs are on one side of the master fader and the returns from the recording device is on the other side of the master fader. The other is an inline console, where both of those are combined on every channel. Right now, the first segment, we're going to explore a Trident split console analog board. Okay, so this is an analog console made by Trident, which is a London-based company. And it is, this is a classic split console. And what I mean by a split console is that the inputs are on one side of the master fader. Here's the master fader. And then the returns are on the opposite side of the master fader, on the other side. Now, the reason for that is because these were designed for taping with 24 track analog uh, recording machines. So that's why you have the 24 returns representing the 24 tracks coming back from the tape machine. These, uh, this, board, this board has 28 inputs. Some of them were made with 32, depending on what, how many uh, channels you had it configured when you bought it. These were all custom made and you had to configure them prior to purchasing them. A board like this in 1989 cost around $25,000. Now, the split console concept is good in some ways in the fact that you can keep things more organized. You can mix off of this and it seems more, it's a more easier visual than what's called an inline console, which basically has this and these combined, the returns from the deck and the sends of the, of the deck are all combined, which we will see on the SSL in the next video. So these split consoles, the inputs would come in here. You still have your mic gains. You still have your line gains. You have your EQs. You still have your same aux sends. And then you have your bus assignments, whether you want to group out your drums to a stereo group or voices or however you want to configure it. And then you have your volume sends. Then you can either send out of those volumes, either again through groups or through direct outputs via the direct output of the channel. Typically, the return of the 24 track would be stacked since you wouldn't have the elaborate EQ and aux send configuration that you would on the input channels. So these are stacked. So that's channel one all the way to there. And then this is the return of channel two. That's why they're both in the same insert point here. So you have a, a two EQ points, you have five aux sends that are available, a pan and a volume. And that's more of a limited selection, obviously, than on the line inputs where you have several EQs, parametrics, several more uh, aux sends, and so forth. So you would have one channels return one, two, three, four, five, six, respectively, for the 24 track return, all with a, a slight small EQs and um, some limited aux sends. Hi, we're back here in the mix room at Montgomery County Community College, and this is an SSL K-Series inline console, and we're going to discuss what this is all about. So unlike the Trident Series 24 split console, this is the SSL K inline console. So what does that mean? Well, upon first look, yes, there's more knobs, but pretty much in the beginning, it's kind of the same. Here are your bus outs if you want to send to groups, just like the channels in the Trident. Here you have a mic or a line switchable between them, which is sort of just like the Trident. Now, this is completely different in the fact that instead of patching compressors and EQs, this has a built-in compressor. Same with, now here's an EQ, which is somewhat like the Trident in its operation. Then a multitude of aux sends, again, somewhat like the Trident in its operations. Here's where the difference lies. You have two different faders right here. So, and you have two different modes in which this board operates. One in the record mode. In the record mode, all the inputs turn into microphones, and these small faders are what send to either your DAW or your tape deck. And then these faders here become the return. Unlike 
The split console where the inputs came on the one side and the return returned on the other side of the master fader. So that's the difference. All the channel, the, both the return and the send are all in line in one channel. So you can then assign these small faders in record mode. They will be then sent the direct out into whatever doll you want to go or you can send them to group outs if you would like as well. Now through the various buttons that are on here, you can decide whether the large fader or the small fader is what operates the output of this channel. In mix mode, all the input channels come line in, meaning they'll be returning from whatever DAW device you are using back into the board. And in that case, the small faders are no longer functional but the large fader now becomes your mix bus. The small faders then you can assign in various ways. You can assign them to send to an effect. You can assign them to send to some other device that you might be triggering or using for something else. It's a very flexible design and that's why the console is designed this way to have its flexibility. Obviously, one of the main benefits of having an inline console as opposed to a split console is the fact that when you're using lots of inputs, like this one is 56 inputs, it would be very difficult to take up all that real estate to have another set of 56 channels coming back. So this really helps a lot in the footprint of the console by having both functions in line. Hopefully this video gave you a better understanding of the differences between a split console and an inline console. I'll be doing more of these from time to time, so I'll keep you posted. Again, I'm David Ivory, Grammy-nominated engineer, producer, and director of the Sound Recording and Music Technology Program here at Montgomery County Community College.